Hello everybody, I always get scared by that start. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're all okay at home. Welcome to tonight's Train Sim World live stream. Train Sim World 3, in fact. Uh, I'm joined tonight by Matt Pedelson as well. We are live from Dovetail HQ, which is wonderful. Love doing these kinds of things. Matt, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to show some great content off. And that's what exactly what we'll be doing tonight because we're going to be showing you the loco bundle that is coming on uh, Tuesday to Train Sim World 3. Uh, and we'll be showing you all three of the locos featured in various different scenarios and situations and really just showing you as much as we can about the pack that's coming to you next Tuesday. Um, before we jump in, though, uh, hot news off the press. Uh, we have launched a patch this evening um, and this is going to Epic and Steam players, uh, Xbox and PlayStation 5 players will be getting the update tomorrow morning, hopefully if certification allows, uh, with PS4 coming later, uh, either later in the day or after the weekend. So um, that patch contains the an eagerly anticipated save game toggle, which I think we'll be showing off in a, in a little bit because we've got the latest build tonight, uh, as well as a whole host of other quality of life improvements and bug fixes. So we're excited to be showing you some of that stuff as we go through. We'll do a little run through as we're going through the stream, as well as some of the headliners that you might want to keep an eye out for. Um, but thanks very much, everybody, for your feedback. This is uh, one of a few... Uh, patches that we're going to be doing to try and sort of improve uh, the quality of life experience for you playing the game. So really excited to kind of, this is the first of many that hopefully will be coming out in the, in the coming weeks. So Matt, what are we going to be doing tonight? So we've got um, three locos in the loco pack to have a look at, and we're going to just have a quick tour of some of the, uh, some of the highlights of the, uh, the settings that we've been changing um, so that we can, uh, you can show it. And uh, if anyone's got any questions about those, then uh, we can try and answer those as we go. Absolutely. Do you want me to go through a list and we'll show them all off in the row? Let's row? go through a list. We love a list. Okay, so should we show off the save game first? Sorry about me being quiet. I'm not talking to the microphone. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the ether, which means that the microphone doesn't pick me up. Hopefully that's a bit better. I mean, I can hear you better, so that's always good. Yeah, excellent. Let's go to the uh, save game toggle, shall we? So under settings, uh, under general, uh, you've got the new save game toggle down here. Uh, defaults to disabled, um, so that um, if you uh, don't know what the, uh, the restrictions are or the problems are potentially with it, essentially nothing changes. Your game will remain without a save game feature. But what you can do now is you, if you want to and you press apply, you can uh, turn it on and you will be given a bit of a, a warning um, just to remind you that uh, save game is not necessarily 100% uh, yet, but it may work for you. Um, people are saying that they're uh, finding aspects of save game be working really well for them. Um, so it's a case of, right, okay, this is back. Now, at the moment, this is exactly the save game that was in Train Sim World 2. So there's no fixes in this at all at the moment. The fixes that have been done so far, which are quite substantial, are still in testing um, and will be coming out um, soon-ish. 
I'm so glad you didn't put a date on that, Matt. <laughs> I, I've streamed enough with Sam to know not to go any closer than soonish. Yeah, I, I think what's really important to note, because I think both me and you were in agreement when we were putting Train Sim World 3 together that we didn't want to put out save game in the current state that it was. But I think having seen the feedback from players where there are a lot of players who have justifiably said, I've never seen any problems, or I can deal with it perhaps not working 100% of the time. I'd rather it were there than not. We've listened, um, and part of the reason why the update was quite as late as it was tonight and why it's staggered today is because we wanted to get as many people uh, to be able to use it before the weekend as possible. So hopefully... You can have a go with that. Let us know if you experience any problems. There is a handy link on this morning page where you can report the issue. Um, I need to put that forum thread live, actually. I completely forgot about that, so I need to put that live. I might do that as we, as we go through the stream. So um, that's save game. Should we talk about... Um, let's talk about adding a uh, scroll to the last selected route button when backing back to the route selection menu. So that one's a bit harder to show on a mouse, but the, the, what it means is that if you were in here and um, you were uh, uh, going in to say choose a route, you picked a route and you clicked scenarios, and if you're on a controller at this point and you pressed back, what it would do is keep Mediterranean, the, the previous route, still selected. Um, so you can go back in again. Obviously, with a mouse, it's immediately unhighlighting it. Um, so I can't really demo it. But um, yeah, that's what it's. Um, that's what that's all doing. Yeah, and we saw another improvement there as well, didn't we? With the uh, difficulty, was it the difficulty of the scenarios or the length of the scenarios being included? So that was there before, but in the oh. rail journeys now, when you click in here, you'll notice that uh, the difficulty and the duration are uh, we're back in here now as well. Nice, nice. Uh, there's a green tick that's going to be added to completed services. We know that was a much requested feature. So once you've completed a service, it should come up with a green tick. Um, what else have we got? Um, settings will now save when you click apply with unchecked settings as well, which seems like a really simple thing. But I would imagine there's a lot of jiggery pokery that needs to happen to make that a reality. Well, it was one of those things, a simple thing to mistake. So the problem previously was that let's say you went into general here and you, you changed a setting like motion blur off and then you went over to HUD and gameplay and you changed a setting here and like um, an X speed limit HUD uh, off or something like that. If you came back to um, general here, you'd find that actually this setting had been lost um, and it didn't warn you that you're going to lose that. So... Um, by uh, so well now it keeps a log of all of the things you've changed and then when you try to click back out if you've got anything on anywhere that's not changed you'll get this warning and it'll tell you do you want to save your settings before you leave uh, so that you can click yes or in this instance I'm going to click no um, but it means that um, now you can't it's much more difficult you, you can't accidentally lose the settings you're changing so it's just one of those things that was a uh, an easy thing to get wrong and we've just tidied all that up yeah, and one final thing before we get into showcasing the locos. Um, this was, again, a much uh, requested feature. We've removed tutorials from the quick drive setting, or you've got the option it's to... It's a setting. So under HUD and Gameplay, at the bottom, there is a training modules in quick play. By default, this is set to include. You can disable it, and then if you select the option in quick play for less than 30 minutes, it will not give you tutorials if you've turned this off. So that was something that I saw, uh, we saw on the uh, on the forums, people saying that that was the fact that it was only really choosing tutorials, and they were choosing not to play tutorials because they were already experienced experienced in the game rendered that function unusable to them essentially so by doing this you can um, you can just turn off the tutorials specifically for quick play so that hopefully will uh, answer that query wonderful okay i think we've kept these wonderful people on tenter hooks for long enough <laughs> should we go into i think we were going to showcase the santa fe f7 first this is one of the three locos that is included in the pack. Before I go into there, let's go into scenarios. So there is um, up, down, left, right, A, B, B, A. <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know. I enjoy a horn on the 4th of July, to be honest. 
<clears throat> Horn on the 4th of July uh, and switching it up are the uh, other three scenarios. So each of these locos in this pack have um, three uh, three scenarios and a selection of services. So we show you some of the services as well. But those are the uh, on the other scenarios. And if I go into uh, the timetable, the F7 comes with a whole set of its own services because uh, it can't substitute into the existing ones. It's just not big enough loco to substitute into the existing ones. There's a big difference between a 1500 horsepower F7 and a 4400 horsepower ES44, uh, or even a 3000 horsepower SD40. So, um, yeah, these are all services just dedicated to the F7. And you'll find these um, generally tending towards the shallower gradients as well, on the downhill as well as the uphill. So a slightly different pathing to the other trains um, that are on there, which generally the downhill runs steer towards the steeper gradient. Um, so um, that is, um, you know, good range of services doing different things with different trains on here as well. Um, so it's, uh, let me just, uh, let's get one of these fired up then and do, um, San Bernardino to the summit. No, we want to do Victorville to San Bernardino. That'll do. We're not going to run the whole thing. Um, I do enjoy how it's 4th of July as well. That seems very apt. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably because of the last thing I clicked on on the <laughs> scenario screen has changed that date. Nice. Um, there are 18 drivable services for the, uh, the F7. Uh, I've I've got my little crib sheet from Joe that he sent through to me. So the F7 has been upgraded with the tooltips as well. So if I um, go ahead and uh, I put the reverser in and try and apply power, I'm going to have to move that. You're going to get the thing saying the generator field is off. So um, we've got to uh, do the generator field, put headlights on. Uh, the brake is set up correctly. We've got four units in the consist. Uh, we're going to put the gauge lights on. Let's get the train going. And release the brake. Oh, it's a beautiful looking loco. It is so nice. Needs, needs more bell. Definitely needs more bell. So one of the other neat things that's, uh, that's on this, you'll notice you've got the two headlights on the uh, on there, and up here you've got the control where we can uh, we can turn on the um, the main light. And this is actually a Mars light, which means it's it's rotating the light in a figure eight. Why 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 would uh, why would the loco do that? Why would you need to use that as a functionality? Why is it going in a figure eight? So the idea is to make the light spread over a wider range so that for people that are if, if, like, um, look in modern locos, you've got these, if I fly over here, you've got ditch lights, which are the ones on the side here. And these ones are angled out to the side a little bit and they make the train visible to people, not just in front of them on the track. Um, they make it more visible. What the, um, the, the, uh, the Mars light is doing is it's making the train much more visible to everybody anywhere near it, even off to the side. And it's making that the figure eight that it's doing kind of makes the light twinkle more. It's not going to get lost in an array of static lights or street lights or anything like that. So it's, it's an old way of doing it, but it's, um, it's uh, represented in there. Tintin's asked a good question. Do the tutorials for these all run in the training center moving forward? Yes. So these um, three packs are all what we were talking about. We'd, we've been talking about since the original announce stream about this idea of decoupling OCO DLCs from the roots, and these three are the first ones to do that. Um, so what this means is that the tutorials will run in training center, and um, the there is no requirement to own. So you can purchase the Cajon Pass pack without owning Cajon Pass. <clears throat> And then you can use that via scenario planner or and so forth on, on as you will. Yeah, so it gives the opportunity to if you just want the loco, but you're not fussed about Cajon Pass or the route that it's it's sourced from, you can still have a play around with it and enjoy everything that it's got to offer. Absolutely, yeah. Silly question: Can it be used on Clinchfield? 
I don't know if it substitutes on Clinchfield. Certainly you could use it in Scenario Planner. I don't know if it qualifies as a sub on Clinchfield. It might well not because the operator's different. Beautiful, beautiful livery. It looks so nice on this route. And all of the stuff that we'll be showing you today, so the three locos, they're available as one larger pack, but you can also get them individually if you like. Um, the pricing, I've got the pricing handy. Each of the individual locos is either, it's £4.99 or €5.99 Euros or dollars. Uh, or the pack is £11.99, $13.99 or Euros. So this loco is meant to represent um, a modern restoration of the F7. There is one of these in, in preservation. Uh, in this livery and so we've aimed to recapture that which is why it's done super super shiny imagine this locomotive is is um, heavily loved um, and um, yeah it's uh, it's been done like that and it's hauling modern wagons because it's it is doing effectively like demonstration freights in the modern world uh, on that one so yeah it's meant to fit into the modern environment even though it's a little anachronistic because it's it's an old loco it's a 50s loco um, actually, it is a, a, rest, a modern restoration of it. Yeah, and I, I guess kind of follow-up question to that, Matt, is why, why did we think that this was a good fit for this particular route? What was it about the F7 that really kind of captured our imagination? So the F7 is one of those super, super iconic trains uh, in terms of how it looks, how it sounds, how it drives. It's, it's old tech. Um, and um, we've only ever done the F7 once on the Clinchfield. Um, it's, uh, and it was one of the things that when we looked at what the options were for this route, um, I think everybody wanted to make it to where this, uh, when we looked at this loco, these, the options for this loco DLC, we wanted something that not just looked very different, but also drove very different, or you operate it in a very different way. Um, you know, these, these four locos are a grand total of 6,000 horsepower. You know, the, you, you're barely much more than a single ES44. And you've got old style controls, old style ways of doing things. You know, bringing this down the hill is going to be different. It's going to be a different, it's not just a different train. Um, it's just, it is going to be something, a different set of skills to learn as well. So it's, um, it's, it, it's, it's a fascinating thing to, both to look at and to, uh, and to operate on the railroad. Yeah, is that, I suppose it's been a bit of a theme really since we've talked about all through Train Sim World 3 is that freedom, that um, flexibility, I guess, and that variety to try and do lots of different types of things with these routes. I think Kate, could you, Home Pass has got some really great feedback so far, but we'd hate for it to become one dimensional. We'd like for it to be something where you can keep coming back to try lots of new different things out. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's uh, there's lots of other BNSF things that can be looked at in the future, but uh, we thought this was uh, you know a really nice bit of fun actually. Look how reflective it is. It's so it's polished <laughs> beyond an inch of its life. Mirrors. A um, couple of questions from the chat. Um, how long are the consists? Or how long can the consist be? On the shorter side, because we're, not, we're only dealing with 6,000 horsepower. Um, I can't remember what the allowed horsepower per ton is for 6,000 horsepower, but it's obviously a lot less than you get out of multiple ES44s. So um, they're in line with the horsepower per tonnage for a, for a 6,000 horsepower. Okay, and can you do passenger runs with these? 
No, we haven't got any passenger cars. Um, getting some heritage passenger cars, it's it's less about doing building them, it's more about getting the reference for them is going to be a real, real challenge. So there's a strong desire in the team to do something like that at some point. Um, but um, it's, uh, yeah, getting the reference for those old carriages is uh, is tough. So, uh, and not only that, we have to get to the States as well to uh, once we found them. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, Yeah, that's the uh, that's the challenge there. If you look, if you look, if you Google for the Santa Fe F7, you'll see them hauling the freight. So it's it's not completely out of place, um, but uh, it just means that you can enjoy the uh, enjoy the train in these beautiful visuals. Hmm. Morgan asked, "Was Santa Fe good work, good to work with? Was it an easy license to get? Maybe the, not, have we got the right people on this to be able to answer that question?" Um, so Santa Fe is a predecessor license that's part of BNSF. The SF in Santa Fe, and BNSF stands for Santa Fe. Uh, BNSF is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe and is the merger of two railroads, the Burlington Northern and the Santa Fe. Um, and BNSF have been great to work with. Um, the, we don't get off access to any trains through uh, on any of the Class 1 railroads in the States. Uh, they've got other things to do with their time, clearly. Um, and um, But they are uh, they reviewed the stock. They gave us lots of feedback on uh, both this and the um, the. SD, the we did ES44, um, and uh, you know it's been it, you know at that level they're they're a very interactive uh, partner. It's really good. And again, it's not kind of another slightly different use of that BNSF license that we we're able to obtain um, early. I think it was earlier on this year, or was it the end of last year? I can't remember. Yeah, absolutely. It's. Um it's, yeah, that was another reason for doing this was to uh, was to actually use another aspect of it. As nice as the pumpkin is, um, yeah. I see BNSF it's, and its history um, actually have a lot of really really pretty liveries, and this is probably one of the most well known. Yeah. To Angry Bird three four five asks, why is there a Santa Fe locomotive on a modern day timetable? We've we've talked about that already, um, but there are. I think you said there was one example of a, a kind of a rail tour style service I operation. I don't actually know if the one that's uh, in preservation actually operates, um, but um, there is there is one of these in, in existence. And so what we wanted to do was to say, well, if it was operable and uh, you were doing effectively, and it was in, in the modern times, then you know you might see it doing these demonstration type freights on there. Um, obviously, you know, something like passenger cars would be great, but, um, that's not been something we can get access to. Keep your questions coming, folks. We'll try and answer as many relevant ones as we can. Eric says, I remember this train was made out of Lego. This train's been made out of everything. I mean, the uh, this is one of those iconic trains that I think everyone had one of these in their train set. It's um, it's it's a uh, it's you know when we did the uh, uh, this route and uh, I think it was the same as everyone shouted yes we want to make home pass it's like obviously we'll be making a Santa Fe F7 at some point then uh, particularly this version the red yellow and silver one the, uh, uh, rather than the uh, or some of the other because this Santa Fe operated these in all sorts of liveries. Yeah, a um, couple of questions. Who who made the livery? One of our team. I can't yeah. remember who. <laughs> yeah. Um, Red Leader says, I don't understand why you made this appear all year. Maybe something for some months like TGV and Southeastern. Hold that thought for the uh, railhead treatment uh, train that's coming up in a bit. Uh, what other questions? Uh, is there any reason why the war bonnet scheme was chosen over the blue bonnet scheme that was used for freight? We wanted the war on it because um, if you think of F7's Santa Fe, this is the one you think of. Um, oh look, another one over there, look, a three. So there are three as ABA as well as ABBA, just, just in case you were wondering. Um, there aren't that many, but they've timed them so that you can sort of see them a bit more. Um, but no, when we looked at them, it's like when you look at um, the various schemes, 
Um, everyone recognises this one. Um, the, 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 the blue bonnet is, is there and is the freight one, uh, as you say. But we found a lot of photographs of the, of the war bonnet all in freight, probably later in its life, um, much later in its life. So, um, like I said, it's not out of place, even if it's not maybe, you know, um, the greatest combination. It's a, an interesting combination, provides a really great visual spectacle um, and, uh, well, the livery designer is there. Yeah, absolutely. There, we're getting a few questions about when is XYZ coming, what's the, um, uh, what's the update on various different things. We have the roadmap live stream next Thursday where hopefully we'll go into a bit more detail about some of the stuff that's coming up. So it's not that we're ignoring those questions, it's just that actually we'll probably have more information for you next week. Triple J's asked, can you show the F7 scenario planner formations at the end? Make a note, we will. I'll make a note. Do you want to do another blast? I was going to say. Great minds, Matt. I was just literally <laughs> about to say, can we have another blast of the whore? This is what happens when we both stand or sit next to each other. We kind of absorb each other's, absorb each other's uh, actions. Uh, Lil Jack asks, what's the difference between this F7 and the Clinchfield F7 apart from the livery? Uh, so I, I don't recall the Clinchfield S7 having, having the um, signal light, the, um, yeah. the Mars light on the front. It's probably the main difference, actually. I think everything else is by and large the same. Can we enter the engine room? No. Is... No. Okay. I've been told. Simon's asked if we're able to turn the game sound down a little bit. I think it's particularly loud on this loco. It's probably going to be a bit quieter for the other ones, but if we can turn that down a little bit, there we go. Hopefully the levels are slightly better for you now. It's great having someone who can do that. That's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank Come you, on. Ben. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, hello producer Ben, he's, uh, he's in the background again and uh, we're very happy to have him here tonight with us. Uh, Kamaro Thunder asks if we have Cajon Pass, can we just buy this loco on its own? Yeah, absolutely. Um, these are all going to be available individually and as part of a larger pack as well, so you can mix and match. Moggy asks, can I change the Mars light for a Mars ice cream? I asked for a friend. I very much do it. <laughs> I feel like Matt's doing this just to troll me now. Because uh, <laughs> I too love Mars me? ice creams. Moggy just likes ice creams. Absolutely. Uh, are there any freight cars included with the F7? No, no, no. it's just the A, the A and the B units. Cool. Uh, and I wonder if we could show the headlights at light, uh, sorry, at night, just quickly, and then we might move on to our second loco of the evening. Oh, actually, we want to show the scenario plan and stuff as well. I've got that on my list as well. Mm-hmm.
Will this be available in livery editor? Yep. Mm -hmm. And will it retain its metallic finish? Uh, probably not, no. No. Because okay. otherwise that would be slightly odd, I think. We got Joe in the chat as well. Hello, Joe. Your ears must have been burning. I've already mentioned you once. Oh dear, we got Arsenal fan TV in the chat as well. It's probably a bad time to say that I'm a Spurs fan. North London Derby at the weekend. Is it ever a good time to say that, though? No, it's not. <laughs> I turn the headlights off. You can see the Mars oh, doing its thing. Oh, that is cool. I haven't seen that before. That's very cool. for all the brakes to come off. TV Piggy asks, when you guys mean decoupling locomotives from the routes, does that mean that I could use the BNSF ES44C4 on any future American routes that come out? You can in scenario you can plan, do that. Yeah, yeah, on, on off the roads, off the rails mode. Um, what we will have moving forward, this is the first, what we would say in vertical commas, decoupled set of locos that we have. So they are able to be ported onto the training center using scenario planner as well. Yeah, so the idea of the decoupling, it just means that you don't need to own the route anymore to make the loco work. Absolutely. Interesting to know what your feedback is on that. When, when and if you, you come to uh, get packs like these, how, how much value do you get from something like that? Would you have got the loco if you don't own the route? That, that kind of thing. It'd just be useful for us to, to understand because it's a bit experimental, this. We've wanted to do it for a while, but we, we don't quite know how, how it will be received. They're not going to be hanging around in training centre, no. They won't be visible on training centre. Uh, unless, of course, you uh, you put them in scenario planner and play around with them. Yeah, or the tutorial. Or the tutorial. All right, Matt, shall we move on to our second loco of the evening? Is there anything else you wanted to show? Just checking to see. I don't think there is anything else on here, no. No, nope, that's it. All right. Uh, well, let's we wanted check to look scenario at Scenario planner, planner, and then we'll move on. <clears throat> uh, right, okay. So, Creators Club, uh, let's go Scenario Planner, Cajon Pass. Uh, test. And we will add a service from Barstow to end there. And then we will run it with the F7. So you've got uh, ABBA, um, AB, ABA, ABA with box cars, ABB, all sorts of different combinations of power. Uh, 10 cars, 5 cars, 20 cars. So these only these are only set up to haul manifests and, and box cars and things rather than you won't see them on intermodals. That will just look silly. Um, so these are designed to run on things like the manifest train that we just saw. So that's the kind of thing you'll see in here uh, as well. Nice. Okay, shall we move on to the 182 Dispo Lock? 
Okay, so to the trains. Let's go and have a look at uh, Castle. Uh, start off with the scenarios again. So we have Tunnel Vision, uh, Gaining Mass, and Nightcrawler are the three uh, scenarios here. Um, so uh, some different challenges uh, with the with the BR-182. One of the really neat things about the BR-182 is, is that I think the fastest electric locomotive in the world, um, and it can go up to 230 kilometers per hour. Now, it can't do that when it's got pretty much anything behind it because the train is limited by the speed of what's connected to it as well. Um, so if you're only hauling 160 kilometer hour max speed uh, freight wagons, that's the whole train's maximum speed. So in the service mode, um, what we've done is we've done a little bit of a mix up. So under here, these are all the 182 services. So there's a whole bunch of, it slots into all the existing freight as well, but it adds some new stuff. And um, some of the new stuff you'll see are things like these. I think these are new. Um, these are light, and light locos. Um, which means that um, you can run these up to the maximum speed of 230 kilometers per hour for their duration, which is, uh, I think, the first time you've been able to run the 182, actually, at its full speed, because in rapid transit, you were hauling 160 kilometer hour coaches, and on Hamburg-Lübeck, the route didn't go above 160 kilometers per hour. So, obviously, in scenario planning, you've been able to take it elsewhere, but in terms of um, out-of-the-box content, um, you can do that. Now, it does also have stuff with the, uh, with wagons of various types behind it as well, um, and uh, it adds some new services. I can't remember. I guess you've got a list of what it adds. Uh, the 182 adds about 10 drivable services to Castle's timetable, and we've got Joe in the chat as well who can call me out if that is absolute cod swallop. There you go. But he gave that information to me, so hopefully it's all correct. So let me just... Fire it up then. We go into uh, the route, midday ish. Right, so we're in the uh, in the 182. Um, let's uh, let's get. Um, we've got a red light in front of us at the end of the siding, so I'm not actually going to go anywhere for the time being, but. This is uh, quite had quite a massive overhaul uh, on this right hand uh, screen. One of the one of the as well as the information that you get out of it, and you've got some other information here you can call up. But one of the other things that's been done is the uh, the function screen, the e is um, e bremps that word, um, which is the um, booster for the uh, electric brake. So I can use this EB ein, um and press the E and it turns on this booster for the dynamic brake. The difference is when it's off, your dynamic brake will, uh, li will limit to a maximum of 150 kilonewtons. And if it's on, it will give you 250, or I think it is, uh, kilonewtons of braking. Do you want me to try and pronounce it? Go on then, JD. Okay. <coughs> e bremse. Uh, hung. Hung. I'm gonna go hung, but I'm sure I've got that wrong. <laughs> we'll, we'll carry on with the trope of me horribly mispronouncing German words. So, along with the um, the screen uh, being updated here, um, one of the things that um, uh, and this new fun functionality of the dynamic brake, the actually the entire physics of this loco have been overhauled. Uh, from scratch and uh, there's been a lot of changes done to the the physics of the train so you're going to find it drives differently uh, compared to the ones you've seen before <laughs> that's really <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, <Paul. laughs> the feedback in the chat for my uh, my pronunciation of uh, <laughs> was um i've just done it again haven't i uh people saying i feel violated i'm glad i could be of service on a thursday evening to you see i took the safe route around <laughs> All right, I'm just waiting for uh, waiting for a train to go past, and then we can uh, we can get going. Sorry, in all of the uh, the fun of trying to pronounce those words, um, you obviously talked about the new physics uh, that have been implemented. What are you able to go into any more kind of details about what has and hasn't been changed with the 182? Um. In terms of, I, I don't have the full list of what's been changed in terms of the physics other than the whole thing has been overhauled. The things that when I asked the engineering question to call out were things like the, the extra detail that's visible on this screen over here and the uh, functionality of the dynamic brake boost um, were the sort of the two main things that were called out. But there's obviously a lot more going on under the hood to, uh, to make that actually work. And Gesingas asks, is newer stuff like the GPR switch implemented too? 
Oh, sorry. Yes. So the um, it's in line with Dresden Racer um, brake systems. So it's got the GPR uh, GPRF, is it? Um, brake switches um, and all of the brake timings and so forth have been updated uh, as well. So um, it's got the uh, prototypical brakes the way that um, we've been we've been doing them lately as well. So it's been overhauled to match DRA as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I saw a question earlier about why we uh, why are these available individually as well as part of a pack. Well, we thought we'd try and give you the flexibility to get which one you might want. I mean, you might want the Dispa Lock, but I was going to be quiet for the musical loco. But I was going to wait until because I've okay. got a red light ahead of me, as anyway. Sure. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll hold fire on that one. But um, yeah, we want. Uh, if you don't want one of them, you can just get one. Uh, you can also, because they are decoupled from the routes themselves, if you've, say, got the um, starter pack for the German route, for instance, but you think, oh, actually, but I really like that Santa Fe F7 that was just shown. Can I still have it? Yes. Yeah, you can still get it individually, and you can use it on Scenario Planner within Training Center. You can try out the, the uh, tutorials as well. You can use it on off-the-rails mode, all of those kinds of things if you want to use it without actually having the source route available to you. It's one of the, the kind of features that we were talking about with Train Sim World 3 that's very hard to explain until we've actually got an example of what it looks like in practice, which is kind of what this is. Uh, and will the first, uh, the um, uh, New Journeys add-on will be divided into three different add-ons as well? Yes, it will be. That's one of the reasons why it's been coming out a little bit later is because we need to set all of the stuff up behind the scenes for that to be a reality. So um, if you want one of those individually, you'll be able to get one of those individually when we release them. You ready? Let's do it. won't let me get up to full speed until we get out of this branch line for this siding for some reason the musical train when we were doing this earlier this blue be producer ben's mind he wanted to try and make the next uh, the next menu music for tsw3 based on uh, this loco <laughs> so we might we might get a remix Hundred in a second. So we're light loco, so we've got nothing behind us, which means our top speed is the full two thirty. There will be achievements for these locos as well, Matt. I believe uh, there are. There are. I'm sure there are. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure. Yeah, there are. I'm sure there are. <laughs> yes, I remember doing the uh, localization for them with Jordan. So. Real train driver, why do we make JD drive? Nobody wants that. You want to have a nice, seamless, good preview experience. And if I were driving, it would be anything but that. Plus, if you've seen me drive from the previous stream that I did, you'd know that I cannot talk or and drive at the same time <laughs> or engage with anything else that's going on. So LZB's holding us back at the moment because we're following and up. We're close to another train. Hopefully that ICE-1 will get out of our way in a minute. Slow old ICE-1. Either that or LZB is what's holding us back at 120 because we're like loco. That'll be annoying. <laughs> Tunnel. So one of the big kind of 
things from the patch when obviously it goes to, to console obviously it's live on on steam and uh, and, and epic now um the cifa pzb acknowledge button now works for um gamepad and rail driver as well it was something that we got a lot of comments about uh, it should be functioning as intended when the update goes out yes absolutely uh what break mode am i in uh Oh, I'm in P. That's probably not right, is it? What should it be in, Ed? PZB mode is M, apparently. It is, but we're in LZB, so that PZB is in passive mode at this point. Still affect LZB. I don't know. I'll have a look. Let's get it turned off then. PZB mode M limits your train to 120 under LZB. Lucas has come Lucas in with. Has spoken. Coming in clutch. <laughs> Typical. So uh, Julia's asked whether the updates to these locos will be backported. Um, at this stage, it's not on the plans to not do that on the at the plans. moment. No. Never say never, but not on the current plans. Let's get out of the tunnel and then we'll play some switches. The title of this new pack is Loco Add-on Bundle, very imaginatively named. <laughs> Well, good question about the download size. I don't know that download size off the top of my head, but it's something that we might Me be either. able to They won't find. be big, though. They're only little loco packs like this, so these are quite small. I pressed Q. Just wanted to hear the musical loco again go back down the scale. Right, okay. So, let's switch uh, this to R mode, apparently. And PZB mode, I think, is in the war in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's in here. Or is it? We'll reset. Un under the driving table, I'm seeing. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually on the right hand side here then. Yeah. So that's in O now. Right, let's go and turn LZB back on. Oh no. Let's turn PZB off and on so it resets, having changed its mode. Oh, if I could remember where things are from one minute to the next, I'd be in a stunningly good position. It's up here, isn't it? There it is. Right, let's reset PZB. Yep, that's now showing 85. It's nothing like a good bit of operator error going on. Right, LZB is back enabled again. We're in the right brake mode. Oh, look, the speed limit's gone up. Hey! Funny that. Uh, Tintin asked, do these locos have achievements? Yep, we just answered that. But yes, they do. <laughs> Little Jack says, the ICE service is passing. Be like, what is this fool doing stopped in the middle of a HSL? Uh, Ratifus, there will be a tutorial. Yes, they'll all be available on the training centre. One tutorial per loco. Elsa B's off. Elsa B is. Oh, of course, yeah, it needs to re -enact, re reactivate it, don't it, doesn't it? But for some reason, I'm not getting power now. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is really good. All the best laid plans and all that. Can you imagine how much fun we'd be having if I were driving right now? We might be moving. Nah. Toggle AFB. AFB has been toggled. 
Needs to be on zero to turn back on. There we go. Good shout. Oh, still on. Still on PZB, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, PZB works. Just demonstrating PZB works here, folks. Gosh darn it. German safety systems, eh? Yeah. Right. Was me giving it with the max gunning it and um just get to get to hear the tone again that's what it is that's what it is yeah um a couple of questions about the new journeys expansion uh, we don't have a date for you just yet um but we are working on getting that available for you the reason why it is a little bit later than all of the other stuff is because we are creating kind of new store pages for the individual component parts of that expansion so that we can have the separate store pages available as well. And all of the entitlements set up as well need to be slightly different. I was probably going too fast coming into LZB or something there. Never mind. What else do we want to look at? <laughs> Yeah, the acceleration on this train is ridiculous. Look at some videos of uh, cab ride videos of these things accelerating. They are amazing. So, I guess in summary, in the right circumstances with the right driver, you can reach up to speeds of 230 kilometers per hour. So the problem there is under PZB you can only go over 160, uh, under 160 kilometers an hour. So that's that's why it happened there. <laughs> so we're all good. Didn't stop. Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to show for the 182? I think that's about it. Okay. Let's go then to our RHTT. I do like that 182. It's fun to drive when you can get it moving for any amount of time. <laughs> this is me out of practice, clearly. No, no German safety systems tutorial PowerPoints coming up, Matt. I need to sit and watch the video myself. That's punishment. Right. Um, Southeast and high speed. Right. Scenarios. Let's start at the beginning. And our scenarios are... There we go. Dawn of the Shed. Oh, I love that one. Night Cleaner and Once in a Who Moon. Also a very solid name. I, I enjoy who has put all of these together. And I would like to also throw my hat into the ring that if you would need any more puns for any service or scenario names, come, come my way. Come my way, development team. <laughs> uh, they're out of control enough as it is. Uh, yeah, so three scenarios. Uh, so for those that aren't aware, the uh, the railhead treatment train is for cleaning the track. The you know, way they talk about on the press and so forth, they talk about uh, leaves on the line. And uh, we all what we all visualise with leaves on the line is a spitting image once did in one of their cartoons, a giant leaf on the railways. <laughs> it's not how it works, folks. It's not what they mean. It's not even little leaves on the line. What it is is this really nasty mulch because leaves do fall on the line and then... Uh, trains run over them and they get, they get crushed into this mulch which becomes incredibly slippery and so what happens is periodically um, these railhead treatment trains particularly in um, September December which is when it is present on this timetable um, what will happen is uh, in that time period these trains will go and they spray chemicals onto the track to clean the track off uh, and restore the adhesion again so that's what you'll be running. It's been marked as uh, the RHTT in the description so that you can clearly tell it apart. And the eagle-eyed among you, and I know I've seen a couple of people commented on this, when we originally announced TSW3, yes. we showed a screenshot of um, the training academy, and some of you noticed there was a really weathered 66. 
bingo, it's this one. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I promise you that wasn't me that leaked that one that time. <laughs> uh, right. So services. There's quite a range of services on this, actually. So uh, you search for 3Sierra to get the uh, these services. So these are focusing on the classic lines. You've got the uh, 3W services, again, um, which focusing on the classic lines. And then you've got the AX services, and these ones are on HS1, which is Ooh. which is a bit interesting. Um, so when there's no other trains, so the, the 66 is not equipped with TVM signaling, but it is permitted to run on HS1 if there's no other trains there. Which so in the middle of the night, they can run this stuff. So what we're going to do is just have a quick look at this service in October, so that the service is there. We'll give it a bit of cloud, and we'll press the go button. I can see James is in the chat and has, has fessed up to the, uh, the, the, the leak that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> right, so uh, before I show you, well, actually, let's look at it. The 66 is a little different. It has a control panel that you wouldn't have seen on the previous ones. And this is for remote control of the wagons that are behind you. Um, other than, than that, the 66 is basically the same, um, other than being um, in a distinctly brown condition uh, and this is really quite tame most of the time these trains are just solid brown the the cleany or the cleaner doesn't get cleaned itself no 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 it does no one cleans the cleaner um, so sad so this is the railhead treatment train there are four wagons in the pack and they are made up of these the um, the generators and the con and the um, water containers or the chemical containers and um you've got different combinations and layouts like so this one has got the uh, one on each side and the generator in the middle this one's got three water uh, containers you've got one with one on the gen these on the outside and then this one's got two of those on it and one of those on it so you've got four different variations of it um they are coupled together with uh with the uh, hosing um and um yeah so uh our goal is to get them powered up so first of all let's get the train ready um we need to get some instrument lights on the night lights on so we're in a decent state now ready to go let's get the train ready so you've got this um can't really see it from this angle but there is a uh, a rotation switch here so we're going to turn that on and then we're going to press the activate controller button turn the power on and we can start hearing things turned on in the back yeah. of the train hit the engine start button turn the water pressure on right now having turned everything on we haven't turned on the sprays yet and it's not time for that so the sprays are supposed to be operated between 20 and 60 miles per hour only um so let's just go and have a look and i'll show you where the sprays are uh while we're in the lights uh so the sprays are there's one down here uh and then there's there's one here and there'll be others down the length of the train so there's just these here because you're not going to be able to see it when we start moving at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn them on now. Um, so if we move over here, you can hear the sprays running. And you can see these just these little sprays now kicking off on the track. So uh, let's go ahead, get the brakes off. Just to point out, these when they um, there's no adhesion changes from if you were to run over the uh, the tracks and use the uh, the rail the RHTT, there'd be no sort of adhesion changes to anything else that might go on the route afterwards. No, no. And if there was, you wouldn't know. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's like Schrodinger's leaf. <laughs> um, Mr. Quicko's asked about save game. So there is an update uh, coming out for. PC uh, PC consoles tonight, or has come out to enable save game. It's on the settings. Um, whereas uh, if you're on consoles, um, all of the platforms apart from PS4, all things going well will be going live tomorrow, and then PS4 will be the other side of the weekend.
So we're going into a big tunnel. So let's just do a, have a, what I thought we'd have a look at is a snare. What I wanted to show that one is because that's an unusually long formation and it showcases all all four of them. Normally they're not that long. Normally they're only there in a couple of cars and they're top and tailed. Um, so let's just have a quick look at that. I thought we'd do have a look at one of the scenarios here. Once in a who moon. Nice. Um, just quickly, while we're on services and scenarios, uh, this one has 16 playable services, 20 AI services, all for September to November, as that is autumn. This is a more normal consist. Yeah. There'll also be some static stock as well outside of those windows um, that you might see in yards and stuff. Yeah, that's the key thing to remember when you get this and you're looking at it is to make sure in service mode you're in autumn, winter, so September, October, November time um, because otherwise the services aren't there and you'll just see things like the trains parked up, wagons parked up. We're telling you this now. We'll make it very clear in the article. Uh, but please, if you see anybody that is having problems, that might be why. Please help them out. So this, the scenarios will guide you to that process of turning them on as well. The brakes to come off. Night lights on, we do. Put instrument lights on. Um, are there tool tips for the RHTT and the new functionalities? Uh, I don't think there's any tooltips for it, no, because uh, tooltips come up in reaction to doing something that doesn't work. Um, so I don't know if there have been tooltips added to it. Once you get the hang of the process, though, which you, you'll see is covered in each of the scenarios, um, then um, you'll uh, you'll be fine with it. It's dead easy. Is the new controller based on real life? Yes. Yeah. It just looked like a TV remote, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bolted onto the cab. Yeah. Is the dirt on the RHTT dynamic, i.e. does the dirt build up? No. No. I love the look of these wagons. It's been, it's so good to get actually some track infrastructure or, um, vehicles um, uh, done. It's something we've been wanting to do for a while. And uh, we've uh, we had the opportunity to uh, get a lot more reference material on the uh, these particular wagons. So uh, um, it was a good opportunity to do them. So, uh, yes, I know there's been uh, some people saying, but, you know, it's a Class 66. We've got a Class 66. The hero of this pack is these amazing wagons and, and also the, the customised version of the, uh, of the Loco as well. Just at Who Junction at the moment. We've got one uh, shed coming that way, another one coming that way. Look at these trains that get cleaned. Strange. Poor sad RHTT. I like the like the creaking and the squeaking. That's a nice little sound effect. Much time. We get yeah, speed up once we uh, once we get out of Who Junction. Yeah, I think one of the things that maybe is worth mentioning for these this pack moving forward is this gives us a lot more opportunity to put these kinds of things uh, and include them as services within future and also potentially previous um, add-ons as well so don't be surprised if you see this popping up a lot more often uh, possibly the the one eight the one eight two as well um, but you just have to wait and see. Yeah, it becomes very reusable. These railhead treatment trains are used all over the country. Um, so uh, it's a, a really neat, versatile pack. 
Uh, there, I've seen a few people both in the forums and on the chat commenting on the uh, the operator in this area of the country is generally a different one. Um, we don't have that license, um, so we've gone with uh, with the uh, EB EWS license for it. But that's why. That's it. That's got the water jets on. We can speed up. Oh, just on while we're on Southeastern, um, some of the patch notes that relate directly to Southeastern uh, include the 465 tutorial now being able to be completed. Um, the deceleration sounds on the 375 have now been included and there's less impact by, uh, let me just have a quick look. Um, uh, I've forgotten which way around it was. It was either the closed window or the open window affecting the audio too much. And I can't remember which way around it was. That's now fixed. The rain audio, that's it. When you've got the doors and the windows shut, the rain audio is now less um, dominating, let's say. Um, what else have we added? Just on Cajon, there are a few people that were talking about the ever densifying fog as you go downhill. That should oh, be yes. fixed yeah. with this update. Yeah, so that was reported by a few people where at some point, sometimes you'd end up going down the hill and by the time you got sort of halfway down, there was just this solid wall around you that you couldn't see anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were able to trace that one down. Interestingly, it turned out to be a bug fix we'd done a long time ago to fix an issue and a bug in Unreal. They've since fixed the bug in Unreal and our bug fix for the fix was now broken in other ways. So we untied all of that stuff and fixed it up. <laughs> nice. Um, other bits and pieces snow from under station canopies we've removed that um what else oh the um there was some sort of semi-circular white artifacts that were appearing above the wheels particularly on the class 66 but also on some other wagons. locos and wagons as well we've removed those now so you shouldn't see those anymore Uh, class 37425, the 395 wipers were recorded from a real 395, so hope so. Grace Killer, we'll talk a little bit about Spirit of Steam in the roadmap next week. Again, all questions about where is this, what's the the update on all of these different other things that are kind of unrelated to this pack or the TSW3 update. We'll try and cover as much as we can in the roadmap stream next week where myself and Matt and Adam will be uh, on the virtual sofas. We won't be doing that one from the office, but um, hopefully you'll forgive us. Don't worry, my garage door will be back. <laughs> LaserJet is uh, going to compare how dirty the Class 66 and the EWS livery is on Saturday because he wants to see the RHTT on Devon, in Devon on Saturday. So, yeah, compare notes. Let's do it. We had an RHTT driver uh, helping us with this pack, so hopefully it should be uh, authentic. That's always a good sign.
amazed tasers i said what's happened to the colonel well he's become our creative director so he's a little bit less day to day with uh, with us plebs now he's uh, he's sitting on his ivory tower somewhere i'm sure There's a there's a uh, a person from called Pink Trains, which sounds suspiciously like a YouTube channel that uh, that a certain Mr. Pedalston would uh, would create, saying that my voice sounds higher pitched than normal. I mean, I'm not hearing it, but JD's just that excited about the railhead train. Yeah. train. I've done a lot of talking today. Maybe that's what it is. getting asked to look at our tail lights. Yeah, I didn't set the tail lights up. Right. Shouldn't be mic quality, not with these things. These are pretty good mics, so much better than the ones I normally we're, use. We're not using headset mics, we're using... Uh, I mean, I said this might actually be my, my voice rather than the one that you normally hear. <laughs> No, no, they're tail lights. They're just not quite the right colour, I don't think, but they are the tail lights. Uh, Shelley asks, when do the leaves fall off the tree? That's what she's uh, or she or they are asking. Um, so that that's not actually simulated, is it, in, in TSW3, the, the leaves falling on the track themselves? No. No. Oh yeah, EWS do run the 66s on the railhead treatment train. Yeah, it's it, this is a perfectly valid combination. Are the wagons livery designer compatible? No, no. Okay. No, because of the um, effectively the wagon is only the bottom bit, and these are cargo loads, and cargo loads the same as containers don't work with the livery editor. So we decided that there was not much worth repainting in the base of it. So no, the uh, the the sixty sixes are, but the um, the actual um, contained the wagons aren't, unfortunately. I think I drove over this bridge this morning. This bit. Yep. Submarine. It's got to be done. You must call it out every time you see it. It's the law. Getting rooted on the left. Derek's asked the wagon sounds from AP. I'm not sure what the source of the wagon sounds are. I'm going to guess they may well be. And um, British Ace, I think we asked this kind of indirectly earlier. Could RHTT services be added to pre TSW3 UK routes in the future? not currently on the plan if that changes we'll let you know yeah mad gamer yeah uh the c for pizza be acknowledged button that should be it should be working as intended if you take a look at the patch notes, that will give you more information. Xbox, you can expect that update tomorrow, all being well.
Very squeaky train. Simon, we just answered this one. Uh, can you add a livery on these wagons via livery editor? No, we just answered that one. So go back about five minutes uh, to hear the explanation why. Isaac asks, why was the voiceover changed on Spirit of Steam? We wanted a slightly more, I guess, authentic voice. It's a Liverpudlian voice now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's Liverpudlian. As part of all of the routes that were sort of core for Trains in World 3, we went out and got all of the voiceovers done professionally. And with... Um, Spirit of Steam, it made sense to get that to the same level as the rest of the, pa uh, the package. So Lorenzo Patalini's asked, what is included in the Journeys expansion? I, I presume you mean the new Journeys expansion. Um, there are new locos for Colnark and uh, Bakerloo and Sampatch. There's a whole new timetable for, uh, for Colnark and as well. If you check on the, oh, I was going to say check on the store page, but obviously they're not quite there yet. There's a lot of information about it if you just Google it. I can't remember exactly everything that was included, but it's quite a, a decent selection of things. Shelley, I don't believe we've got a voiceover for the GWR planned, a new voiceover? For the GWR? No. No. No, no. Not planning to redo any of them. That We did Spirit of Steam. We redid Spirit of Steam specifically because it became one of the core routes in the Deluxe Edition. Yeah. Are we approaching Chatham? Oops, just started raining. Uh, we've just gone through Chatham. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Jack's asked, how do you get your stuff from Train Sim World 2 to Train Sim World 3? Depends which platform you're on. If you go to our support centre, there are comprehensive guides for whatever platform that you're on, how to get those legacy routes on your Train Sim World 3 game. If you're on a disc, please get in contact with us and we can, or if you've got the various different eligible discs that we've provided keys for in the past get in contact with us and we will uh, we will take it from there uh, the 66 would be clean again in livery designer it goes all the all the stuff in livery designer always goes back to a base paint to be very similar to the one that's already in there. Just coming up on Gillingham. Spooky, same answer to all of the other questions related to when will we get XYZ thing. Roadmap streams next week, so we'll try and answer as much as we can there. Same with add-ons manager, save game changes, all of that kind of stuff. We'll provide an update next week. Release date for this pack is Tuesday.
All right, Matt, is there anything else you'd like to show us with this this collection? Just in case anyone's curious, you can walk around on them. Ah. Apparently not from the platform, though, typically. Let me go around the other side. Don't do this in real world. We'll show the um, RHTT in Scenario Planner, and we'll also show the 182 even in Scenario Planner as well. You used to be able to walk up and down. All right, fine, so you can't. <laughs> well, that's a shame. So station lighting, uh, that's a good thing to know, actually, because we'll... Um, We've been talking about this internally. Basically, the lighting at the moment is done on a timed basis rather than a luminosity basis. Yeah. And I think there's work going on behind the scenes, Matt, isn't there, to make yep. it work more on a, if it's dark outside, the lights will come on rather than it's five o'clock, the lights will come on. Yeah, so. yeah because you, the scenes can get a lot darker now than they could previously, um, and uh, particularly with variable weather and so forth. Um, so now it's just going to be um, done based on how light, what the light levels are, and they'll just turn on. So that will fix that up much, much better. Yeah, these are the kind of quality of life improvements we want to try and make to help enhance your experience. And again, if you want to check out what's going to be part of that first patch, you can check it out on our forums. We'll put an article live tomorrow when we've uh, put it live on more platforms. Oh, climb under as well, that's nice. You thought I got stuck there. Didn't I you? thought you got stuck. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's, it's, it's what I like about the Araho treatment train. And again, it's the same as the, uh, the other stuff is it gives you something a bit different to do on, on the route rather than another commuter train or so, uh, or so forth. It's not just the freight train. It does different stuff than, uh, the, than you've been doing previously. So it's, um, it's a really interesting uh, new train to add to your collection. Absolutely. All right, Matt, shall we show what they're like in Scenario Planner? Because again, one of the real values of having a pack like this is that you can kind of take it and put it wherever you want. Um, and Scenario Planner is a really good way of being able to do that. If you've not used it before, um, well, we're getting a, a little example here right now, but this is a very basic example. You can also, um, you yeah, can port them onto any route that you would like you can also do off the rails mode which is no holds barred at all so um you can kind of port it to wherever you want to so don't worry about the fact that they're red that just means that the uh, the path i've set up they they, uh, they wouldn't fit on but uh, in terms of variety now you're going to get all the variations of this when you collect 66 even though it says rhtt you get all the 66s essentially um so you can see jna wagons the uh uh, what have we got here? MFAs, RHTTs, four, five, and eight tanks. Um, all sorts of stuff going on there that you can uh, that you can pick from on that. Should we show the the one eight two? One eight two again. It's just a wide range of um, freight from uh, all the different things. So whether they are containers or box cars or uh, car transporters. Um, all sorts of them, uh, 60 car transporters there. So that'd be 30 pairs essentially for that one. So that's probably the longest train. That's a double header with, uh, with, um, 60 loaded. So that's probably the longest train. Yeah. 970. Nearly a kilometer. Nearly a kilometer long that one. So, uh, I imagine that's uh, good fun. Yeah. And you've, uh, you saw the, the one that was highlighted in white, there was the light loco as well, which is what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so light loco. Which running light loco, you can bring it up to two hundred and thirty. It might not. You might need to be not in LZB to be able to uh, to do that, uh, or PZB. Um, but uh, yeah, the train can run at the two thirty. Um, uh, whereas with any freight cars, you're going to be limited to uh, usually running in PZB mode M, which is going to limit you to uh, one hundred and twenty. Brilliant. Okay. Is there anything else, Matt, you wanted to talk about in relation to the? Uh, add, loco add-on bundle. I don't think so. I think we pretty much covered it. It's um, it's three interesting new bits of variety to run on um, three really great routes. Um, and 
I hope having seen it, you can see, uh, you know, why we've done them this way. And um, yeah, they're, they're great fun. Um, they're, there's a, a nice bit of variety that it adds to the pack there. And don't forget, there are three individuals. So if you only want to get one of them, because that's just what you want, then um, that's how it will work. Um, or uh, if you want to get all of them, then there is a bundle um, uh, as well. So And you don't need to own the base route. So if you like the idea of the F7, but you haven't got going past, that's fine. Absolutely. I can see we're back on the screen as well. Uh, <laughs> this is why I wore the shirt. This is why. Um, yeah, I mean, Matt, you've done most of my job for me there, to be honest, in terms of <laughs> I've not really got that much else to add. Um, other than what I would, again, just like to reiterate is that what we're trying to do, and this is going to be a running thing with Train Sim World 3, is we want to try and really provide a bit of variety and diversity to the routes that we've got within the game we want to try and make sure that it's not a one-dimensional route there are other things that you can do with it and hopefully this pack will allow you to do some slightly different things that you might not have normally done on the uh, on the routes that perhaps you've come to know and love by this point given that it's been out for three and a half weeks at this point something like that is it nearly yeah. four weeks yeah so you're going to be quite familiar with them this just mixes it up and adds in something else to to the plate so um just quickly going through the, the prices again, because uh, I think that was asked in the chat. Uh, it is for the individual uh, locos, they are £4.99 or €5.99 Euros or dollars. With the way that the pound is going at the moment, I expect those to equalise fairly soon. Uh, <laughs> but uh, then we have for the bundle, it is £11.99 and €13.99 Euros or dollars. So... Um, Reasonably priced, we think it's fairly priced, and uh, we hope, as I say, that you've you've seen something that you like tonight. Um, please keep on letting us know your feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear it, and not just on this pack, but on Train Sim World 3 as a whole, because mm -hmm. hopefully, again, as you've seen with the update today, we've taken on a lot of what you've said already and implemented it as either fixes or quality of life improvements. We're going to continue to do that over the course of the next few weeks, months, years, and uh, we want to try and make sure to say that the game is as good as we can make it. So keep that, con keep that feedback coming in. We can't wait to see how you enjoy this pack on Tuesday. Yeah, there's, there's already some more stuff uh, going through the process at the moment in res direct response to the feedback we're getting. So just to uh, echo what JD's saying there, keep keep keep, keep telling us what you uh, what you want to see. Yes, and just before we sign off, uh, you have put a forum thread live, Matt, about accessibility, haven't you, as well, which we'd really like to get some feedback on. Yeah, let me clarify what accessibility is um, because there's been a bit of confusion about it. Accessibility refers to uh, making the game accessible for players that have some sort of dis uh, dis disability or so forth. So, for example, if you've got colour deficiencies, colour blind or um, motor deficiencies, that kind of thing. And it's about making the game accessible um, in, in uh, for people who've got that with, with some really great feedback from someone about dyspraxia um, and what a simple way to make the game 100% more playable for someone who's got dyspraxia um, and uh, and other conditions. We've already done a lot of work to improve the colour blindness um, support in the game, but there's always more to be done. And so everybody out there who is uh, living their real lives and um, playing the game, if there are things that um, uh, that uh, your th or problems that you've got, even if you haven't got the solutions for them, but if there are things that that, that uh, you find difficult. Um, because of um, your your uh, conditions and and so forth, then tell us. Uh, do do let me know. Um, uh, and if you've got ideas or you know this is the things that in other games that make it you know th this is how they deal with it, then tell us that as well. Um, you know it's uh, it's a real shame if the game is not playable for what is essentially a very simple to fix reason. So um, you know I am a big fan of getting that stuff done as a priority. So uh, tell us what you think. Absolutely, completely agree. And everything from like light sensitivity to color blindness to everything else that, that kind of falls within that um, kind of body of things, then please just let us know. Um, okay, well, I think that'll do us for this evening. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. We will be back, I think, next Thursday for the roadmap. Uh, mm -hmm. And the article will also go live on Thursday. Um, hope you uh, have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thanks again, Matt, for joining me and for driving for tonight. Um, I won't be asking you to do the German route again uh, next time round. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was definitely a forced laugh. Before I get killed, uh, I'm going to sign off for the evening. Have a good one, everyone, uh, and see you later. See you later, everyone. Thank you.